The late Cretaceous period of North America was ruled by the Tyrannosaurs. They had the advantage over other land predators in terms of sheer size and power. But in the rivers and estuaries there was a predator that even the Tyrannosaurs feared. A predator that could easily snatch up a dinosaur who got too close to the water. I am of course talking about the terrifying croc, Dinosuchus. Dinosuchus was an ancestor of today's alligators and caimans. He was a basal member of Alligatoridae. In other words, today's alligators and caimans which are placed in subgroups are more closely related to each other than to Dinosuchus. Interestingly, however, alligators and caimans are more closely related to their ancestor Dinosuchus than to today's crocodiles or gharials. Dinosuchus lived 85 to 73 million years ago in New Mexico, USA. Dinosuchus had several species including including Dinosaurus acieri, Dinosaurus riograndensis, Dinosaurus schwimeri and Dinosaurus rugosus. Unfortunately we only have fragmentary finds of the type species D. hacieri, so that it has already been suggested that D. riograndensis should be recognized as the new type species. Today we will therefore mainly speak about Dinosaurus riograndensis. This species is estimated to weigh between 4 and 7 metric tons. The average estimate of the length of an adult animal is around 10 meters or 32.8 feet, but maximum estimates exceed 12 meters or 39.4 feet. In other words, almost as long and heavy as the T-Rex Gaudi, which is one of the largest. Only in terms of bite force do T-Rex and Dinosuchus differ enormously. Dinosuchus is estimated to have a bite force of over 100,000 newtons. That is almost twice as much as a T-Rex and perhaps even the greatest bite force of all time. Dinosaurus' snout looked similar to that of today's alligators, except that it was more elongated and slightly puffed out at the end. Its skull measured about 1.5 meters or 4.9 feet. Dinosaurus' upper jaw has notches which accommodate a particularly large tooth in the lower jaw. These notches no longer exist in modern alligators, but surprisingly they do appear in today's crocodiles. This shows that Dinosuchus was not just a large crocodile. Unfortunately, many exhibitions of this animal had been based on exactly that. Dinosuchus' teeth were thick and had a wrinkled texture. The long front teeth were for grabbing prey, while the shorter back teeth were used for breaking bones. Dinosuchus had rapid tooth growth and so it could afford a large amount of tooth wear. It also had small holes on its snout. Dinosuchus also had osteoderms. These bony plates served as armor, helped regulate temperature and provided mineral reserves. They were also proportionally larger and thicker than those of most modern crocodiles. These osteoderms also had deep pits. Thus, despite its weight, Dinosuchus was able to walk on land thanks to these osteoderms, as they also served as attachment points for connective tissue. Despite this ability, however, it preferred to hunt from the water. There were also other megacrocs. Dinosuchus was often compared to Sarcosuchus, the supercroc. However, in recent years it turned out that Sarcosuchus only reached a length of 9.5 meters or 31 feet and a weight of 4.3 metric tons. Sarcosuchus was nevertheless able to slay dinosaurs. So if Sarcosuchus was big and dangerous, Dinosuchus was huge and absolutely deadly. The crocodilian that came closest to Dinosuchus was probably the giant caiman Purosaurus. This behemoth lived in the Cenozoic era and hunted large mammals. Purosaurus is estimated to have been similar in size to Dinosuchus. But now the question arises, how did Dinosuchus become so large? To calculate the size of Dinosuchus, we have to take a look at its osteoderms, which show growth ranks. Dinosuchus reached its full size at the end of its 35th year of life. After hatching, Dinosuchus grew quite quickly and then grew at a constant rate of 0.3 meters or 1 foot per year. If we look at a saltwater crocodile in comparison, it is noticeable that the growth rate of this animal is similarly fast, but then declines with adult age. Dinosuchus on the other hand has continued to grow for much longer. Dinosuchus' life expectancy is estimated at over 50 years. 
the oldest T-Rex that we know of only lived to be 30 years old. This means that Dinosaurus could live almost twice as long. In the Cretaceous period, the Western Inland Sea divided North America into two landmasses, Laramedia in the west and Appalachia in the east. Dinosaurus Schwimeri was at home in Appalachia, while the larger Dinosaurus Rio Grandensis lived in Laramedia. Dinosaurus lived in estuaries, transition zones between rivers and the sea. Most fossils have been found in these environments. No fossils have been found further inland. However, a few fossils have been found in areas that were open sea habitat. But if you compare this with the number of Dinosaurus fossils in the transition zones, you realize that Dinosaurus probably did not visit the sea all too often. Estuaries receive nutrients from both waters and can support diverse life. Because of their access to food, water and shipping lanes, humans today often live near estuaries. These estuaries were probably another reason why Dinosuchus reached its massive size. Dinosuchus probably hunted smaller crocodiles and animals that came too close to the water. If its bone crushing bite was not enough to kill its prey, it dragged it into the water to drown it. What is still speculated is whether Dinosuchus mastered the famous death roll, like today's crocodiles. This is highly questionable as Dinosaurus was large and massive and therefore the question arises as to whether the skull could perform the death roll. However, we can be sure that Dinosaurus preyed upon dinosaurs from time to time. Coprolites, meaning fossilized excrements, have shown that Dinosaurus ate more than just dinosaurs. Its prey also included turtles. On the dinosaur side, it was hadrosaurs on which bite marks were already found. Cretosaurus could have been one of these hadrosaurs. Bite marks from Dinosaurus schwimeri, the smaller species, were also found on an Apalachiosaurus, a Tyrannosaurid that could reach up to 7 meters or 23 feet in length. This Apalachiosaurus was not fully grown and only 5 meters or 16.4 feet in length, but the bite marks show that Dinosaurus attacked it on the hind leg, a spot that today's crocodiles also choose to strike prey. It should not be forgotten that Dinosuchus, like any animal, started small. However, adult specimens then became the largest predators in their habitat, with a bite force greater than that of the T-Rex. So why did an apex predator like Dinosuchus become extinct? At the end of the Cretaceous, Larimedia and Appalachia pushed together again to form a huge land mass. This also wiped out the western interior seaway between the two land masses, thus depriving Dinosuchus of its habitat. This reduction in suitable habitat probably led to the extinction of Dinosuchus rio grandensis and Dinosuchus schwimeri 73 million years ago. Ironically, this also later contributed to the rise of the king of the tyrant lizards. This means that only Mother Nature could stand up to Dinosuchus and was ultimately the reason why the King of the Crocodiles vanished from the face of our planet. That's it for the video of Dinosuchus. I hope you could learn something new or interesting. Leave a like if you liked it and subscribe to the channel for more videos about dinosaurs and prehistoric times. If you want to get to know me more, you can also check out Instagram and Twitter, links in the description. And with that, have a nice day or evening, goodbye.